Hi guys, welcome back to Watch with Veer. Today in this um, Python coding tutorial episode, uh, we're going to be taking uh, different elements from this calculator script that we created in day two of this series and putting it into this main.py, which is our chatbot script uh, that we created in day one of this uh, series. So the first thing we want to do is start our, with our import. So we want to go from tkinter, okay, because we're importing all from tkinter, so from tkinter, inter, import star, which is all, or also all, and then we want to go from tkinter, import, uh, import ttk, so we're importing theme t, uh, tkinter, which we are going to get to in the next episode, where where we are going to style our uh, chatbot GUI, then after you've done that, from the variable t equal to true to the the line print bot uh, a comma response, we want to comment that out. So we'll go comment, comment, and comment, comma comment, and then we can start getting and creating our widgets. So the first widget we want to create is our user entry, which is going to be e uh, equal to entry. Uh, wait, no. The first variable we want to create is our root variable, which is our for our window, which is going to be equal to t k. And then the next variable is u e user entry equal to n uh, um, entry pass in r because that's the variable the root variable then we want to go l equal to um label and then r comma text equal to and then we'll keep that blank because we don't need that anything in that and i'll explain a lot later then bot entry equal to text text is a new widget that we haven't covered yet which we are covering so it's a it's like the label widget but it's a text widget in so you can in various forms and things so like you can change the width and height which you can't do with labels or entry entries entry blocks or um entry widgets or lab or button widgets but you can with this that's why we have to go r width which is going to be equal to 59 and height which is going to equal to 5 and then we go we create the submit button so sb equal to but uh, button r text equal to enter then we create the bot label so bl equal to label the bot label and the user label so bot label equal to label or te uh, comma text equal to bot colon not boo bot colon uh, user label equal to user label equal equal to label R and then comma text equal to use zero colon and then we'll start to add these to the screen using the dot grid function. So the dot grid function um, is a different function that we can use to take these uh, uh, widget elements and put them onto the uh, TK inter screen. So I'm going to switch to my browser and we're going to take a look at um, the Python grid method in TK inter. The, the grid geometry manager puts the widgets in a two dimensional table. So like a table in spreadsheets, it's like in a grid. The grid manager, this is the most flexible of the ge ge uh, geometry managers in TK inter. If you don't want to learn how and when to use all three managers, I only know how to use two, which is dot pack and dot um, grid. 
this is what I find most useful and helpful. Dot pack I uh, use for packing um thing I use dot the pack method. Um uh if I want to create a quick GUI. So I'm gonna but when I want to create like a chatbot GUI I use dot grid. So this creating this layout using the pack manager is possible but it takes a lot of extra frame widgets because you need each each frame will be in each frame will one label will be in each frame and then so on so you'd have one two three four five six seven eight frames and that would be a lot to pack uh, I didn't mean to click on that let's go back okay so using the grid manager it's easy you create the widgets and then you use the grid manage method to tell the manager in which row and column to place them you don't have to specify the size of the grid because the, the manager will automatically see what is largest and then will size it pro appropriate to that so the what we so this is an example so here we find a grid method to arrange labels in respective rows and columns as specified so l1 label1 one, label1 one dot grid row is 0 so it will be uh it will be on the left it will be on the first row and the left because it's columns row 0 column 0 so first row on the left and then l2 row 1 column 0 first uh second row on the left and then you have widgets column 1 so it'll be in the first row on the right and second row on the right see first second so on and so forth then you have here a more detailed script and this is what you get um this is what you get uh for the output which is what they show up here so label one label one entry two entry two image check button button one button two so that's what you they have down here height width and then they have that preserve zoom in zoom out so that's the check button and you never do dot grid and then dot pack either so let's go and code with those so I'm gonna switch back over to my VSC window and then we'll start using the dot grid so what we're gonna start with is the um, submit button so we're gonna go SP dot grid go row equal to zero column equal to three one thing I also want to say is uh, in Python or in TK inter in the Python TK inter module uh, rows and columns always start with with the integer of zero so you all so well, you always have it will always start with the zero uh, I that's I that's just because of the programming but it'll start with the zero so zero will be like the first row it's sort of like in history how we're in the 21st century but in the date it's only 20 uh, 2019 it's 21st century because the first century was from zero uh, CE to 1000 CE and then the second century was from 1000 CE to 2000 CE so it's sort of like that why why I didn't I actually know that we were in the tw I thought we were in the 20th century but we're only we're actually in the 21st but that's a totally different story that I might do into another video but anyways so we continue with this so be dot grid so that's bot entry dot grid we're gonna put that row four uh, row equal to four comma column equal to two and then label um dot grid is gonna equal to row uh equal to three comma column equal to two then we're gonna go user entry equal to uh dot grid and then row equal uh equal to 
zero. And then comma column equal to two. So so three twos and then we go bot label dot grid row equal to four column equal to one and then user and uh, user label dot grid row equal to four column equal to one and we'll save this and then we'll run this and see what happens god okay so I made a typo it should be great and I also forgot to do one other thing which is to go r dot main loop and then save that run this there so now we have uh, um, user label Oh, and here under user label, I so forgot to put that as zero. So make sure that you always have the correct row. Otherwise, um, it will show up with whichever comes. So now whichever comes like second or last, depending. I don't know how it works. But now we have user. We have bot. We have the enter button here. We have this, um, this bot, which I can enter text into. Then we also have here where I can enter text into it, but if I click enter, nothing happens because we haven't created our um, function that we're going to create now that will make it respond just like this while loop down here did. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, non caps define function, so def respond. This respond and then in parentheses event in, uh, event and then we're gonna create a variable called re that's gonna be uh, that's equal to request that stands for request it's gonna be equal to ue dot get then just parentheses then res is equal to response so that's bot dot get response pass an re then we want to go be dot config and then state equal to in caps normal then the reason why we said state equal to normal that way we can insert um response which we're gonna this is what the insert was we can change what happens inside um bot entry and then at the end we're gonna go be.config state equal disabled that way the person on the other on that's using it like teamed in using the user entry can't change the response that the bot sent them because as we saw when i uh, loaded the uh what we could just create it in the code it we could type things into that text box so now what we're going to do is we're going to go um, be dot uh, delete and then because be is a text and uh, a text widget we have to put our index as one um, point o and then in uh, quotes e and t and then u ue dot delete that way 
that the user and user doesn't have to go in and delete all the all the things he entered into this text box. He can just uh, he can just click the button and it'll delete for him. Just like in an SMS app, when you click the send button, it sends the message, but it also deletes what you have typed into the um, text box. So that's what we have ue.delete and because uh, ue is an entry we have to do use the index or first as zero and then the last is end well that's what it says on my thing but anyways and then you go be.insert then 1.0 because this is a text box that we're working with not a entry and we to pass in RBS which is for response and then be dot config state equal to disabled we'll save that then we come back down here to underneath the SB the SB variable which is submit button and we're going to type in SB dot bind uh bind hmm, I don't know what happened sb dot uh dot bind and then in parentheses we're gonna go uh but dash one then response spawn and then we'll save this and then we'll run it and watch what happens mm -hmm. now when we enter something like hello we're gonna get the um Oh, so, um, one thing we had to do, I forgot this isn't ENT, not enter, this is end, sorry, it's end, not enter, not ENT, that's end, and then when we run it now, and we put hello, click enter, it'll say hi, this is a test, so, that's it. For today this is almost a 20 minute video so i'll end it here and the next video be prepared to start styling our your our chatbot gui that we just created thank you for watching Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, comment down below, and also don't forget to check out my personal website at www.virsing.ca, my shopping website, shop.virsing.ca, and my blog, blog.virsing.ca. Thank you for watching and I hope you had a nice day.